Welcome back to the dinner table. We're so excited to have on one of our very favorite people, Jenny Fisher. She works as the MBA social digital on site lead. Okay, right? Yeah. That was, good. That was perfect. <laughs> okay. She has a really sick job and we're, she's going to get right into it. We're just laughing because her title is a little bit long, but um, it's really cool. And we're so excited to talk to you all about it. But something else that's interesting is both your parents played at Marquette. So you grew up in this Marquette family similar to ours. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys know exactly how it goes. Um, and I remember going to games as a little kid going to all the Marquette basketball camps, especially like eating ice cream at Cobain Hall for like the little lunch break that we would get at the camps growing up. And so it was honestly a dream, like growing up in that kind of Marquette basketball family. Um, I really, really appreciated it. And I think even more so as I got older. How much do you keep up with them still? Oh, I try to as much as possible, especially like the men's team the past like two years. Again, I'm a fan of both the men's and women's and just like the success that they've had when I was in school. And it was like, I mean, Cam and Chloe, you guys obviously know, but like there was a point where it was two top 10 programs. And like I was also able to like help on like the Instagram and the and the Twitter. And that was also partially like where some of this all kind of started in terms of my career. But I love being able to keep up where I can. I tell people all the time it's like juggling watching NBA, which is 80 games for a single team in a season if you're working from a team perspective, but from a league perspective, never knowing where you might have to shift, plus every single temple event between All-Stars, NBA Christmas Day, we just added the in-season tournament this past year. And so it's keeping track of all of that, which is obviously in the forefront, but then Marquette basketball as much as I possibly can, and especially when they show up at Madison Square Garden for the Big East tournament. Were you as heartbroken as us when we took that loss to NC State? Yes. And I remember, I think I was covering a game at the same time. I was in Miami, actually, for a Portland Miami game, which in hindsight is like, oh my gosh, like, okay. I had to miss Marquette uh, losing, which again, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. But even just to see the run that they kind of went on and like the national buzz, I love when like non Marquette people get excited about Marquette basketball or like yeah. we become their like one Marquette person that they're like, oh my gosh, like, do you see what's happening? You saw this, you saw this quote from Tyler Kolick, like that gets me excited because it's like something that again, we are so attuned to and like is special to us. Like even from a generation before us is now like, I love the national scale that, that we've been able to kind of push it to. Yeah, for sure. Let's, I want to get into like what you do now. We talked about your title being kind of like all over the place, but you have such an important role in the NBA and we've all loved to see it from the social side, especially. Um, and so kind of just touch on your role. What is your main thing? How did you get involved in this? Um, talk about that. Yeah, I'll start with like just my start in like social and digital in general, because I never thought this was where I would wind up. Um, when I was like even choosing like where I was going to go to college, right? Like we'll rewind back to high school. I always knew that I loved journalism and shout out Arrowhead High School. Sorry. I was going to say shout out Arrowhead. Yeah. My mom went to Homestead, so I've always got a little bit of love <laughs> for really? Homestead. But yeah, she was a Highlander. I can't believe you didn't know that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think she actually used to have some basketball records there, but they're probably all broken by now. But awesome. maybe, by, maybe by Chloe. <laughs> seriously, honestly, we should take a look at the record books there. <laughs> the rebounding one specifically, please. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I, I always knew that I loved like journalism, storytelling, writing. I remember I had a high school coach that was like, all right, do you want to play basketball in college? Like you're probably D2, D3 level or like, do you want to focus on a career and like some way that you can kind of parlay that? And so I ended up choosing Marquette um went there I, I almost felt like remiss to not like I had looked at Syracuse I had looked at Vermont my dad is from New Jersey so like the east coast was like oh I could still be near family but get a little taste of something different but of course all roads lead back to Milwaukee and so I was able to go to Marquette and like get my foot in the door immediately like I, I joke that before I even stepped foot in a classroom I was in the Al McGuire Center because I had, again, a family friend was like, hey, this guy, Brian Anderson, like he does some like Marquette basketball games. He goes to church with me. Like I'll connect you to and, and see where it can go from there. And then lo and behold, I'm like working in the athletics office week one. And I'm like, what's happening? I don't even, people aren't even in school yet. 
Um, I'm taking, I'm taking like the stats from the soccer game or I'm running the scoreboard at whatever event. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but it, hopefully it leads somewhere. And yeah, it, it kind of led into doing a lot of the socials for Marquette basketball, convincing Scott Kuykendall to let me tweet during the Marquette men's basketball games. <laughs> and then again, they connected me to the Big East. Big East connected me to people at Fox Sports. So I did an internship in college out in New York City going into my senior year. And then I worked at the NCAA straight out of school. Uh, running the NCAA women's college basketball account was like my main job duty. And that was like the time of my life. I, I so enjoyed that. And like to see again, the rise of like women's college basketball as well. And the WNBA at that has been amazing. Um, and again, it just makes me even happier that I was able to do that. But ended my like year there and wound up at the NBA, started in WNBA started doing G League and then they invented G League Ignite, which is crazy that it is no longer. But again, just yeah. like a bunch of great experience that I was able to get under my belt, was offered a full-time job at the NBA when the Bucks were in the NBA finals. So <laughs> it was like I was chilling at Good home. Timing. It was, I was literally chilling at home like for the 4th of July. It was like right after COVID, like July, 2021. And I get a call that's like, can you fly to Phoenix for game one? You have to start quarantining so that you can cover media day and interview the players. And I was like, what? Like I had just gone as a fan to like, what was it? The Bucks Hawks? No, Bucks Hawks series. I think it was right before that. I was like at the heart. The having Nets. A beer, Brooklyn watching. Nets. Yes. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like I just watched this series and now I'm like getting to be a part of the finals. And obviously the Bucks went on to win. And so again, just the way that everything lined up and the dominoes fell, I was like, I never even, I'm like getting chills right now. I never thought that I would see like a Bucks championship, let alone like get to be a part of the storytelling in it. So it's been going to come up on like five years at the NBA soon, which is yeah. a crazy thought, like in my total time. So that's insane. I, I feel like five lot. years has flown by. I feel like we just were like in, college in college together. Yeah, I just got my five year college reunion letter and I was like, I called my dad. I was like, I graduated five years ago. Like, I, I can't believe. Are we going, Jenny? Uh, should we? <laughs> no, no. You guys have to. Maybe, we, Maybe we like the, the five year reunion or like yeah. 25. It feels yeah. too soon. I don't know. That's what Noreen said. She's like, I, I said the same thing. I'm like, do, do we go to this? And she's like, no, nobody goes to the five year one. Cameron, Cameron goes to a Marquette five year reunion every weekend at the Harp or the Brewery. I was gonna so. say, I'm like, essentially every every Marquette say, home game. Well, I'm like, every I think Marquette, Marquette people are all good about like keeping in touch. And so it's like five years out, maybe not 10, yeah. 15, yeah. 20. When I start to forget about everyone, it's like, okay, let's see where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to recap there. It, it's it's funny to like say this a little bit, but I feel like um, like Jenny, you're because we're young, but you were like way ahead of your time. I mean, we we both went to Marquette together, and just to hear you say like I had to convince Scott Kaikadal to tweet during the games. Now to think about all that they do like during the games, and they have Josh Levin with the video and stuff. Like we literally, I remember when you came in, and it's like okay, you're putting up Instagram stories, and it was like a big deal. You know, yeah, and and now to 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 see that all develop at Marquette, and not just at Marquette, but like if you don't have big time people putting out videos and social media content at your college, you're you're well behind the eight ball. So I feel like you kind of were one of the people that started that. And I remember, I mean, even Allison Kelleher would have the the video out and stuff. We'd have everybody do it, just random random stuff, and 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 to see that like you're doing this in the NBA now is is so awesome. So I, I just yeah. want to say kudos to that. And like, obviously with your title, I think there's a lot that goes into it because you were just doing everything. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's like being a jack of all trades is always a good thing. But I mean, you guys know, especially in like this media industry, there's so many different avenues that you can take, but I've never thought that I would wind it. Like my role is mainly like a cell phone capture, cell phone edit, publish from a phone. Like I've got my two phones on me at all times. Sometimes I have three or four, but it's like, everything I'm doing is like out of my pocket and it's in the moment. I mean, again, I just came from F1. You saw Karan Butler, which again, shout out Wisconsin. Um, I've loved being able to like work with him through the finals and stuff, but like saw him knew that he won the championship in 2011. So we brought him the trophy. We were at F1 to kind of do this NBA finals trophy tour. And it's like, 
all right, I'm doing a quick interview with him, making sure I get the best possible sound bite. I'm editing on my phone, removing background noise, adding like closed captioning, making sure I can find the photo of him for 2011 on my phone, like on the Getty Images app, editing mm -hmm. all of that into a timeline, creating different sizes and then boom. And it's like, oh, that took me 20 minutes. And it, it's just how fast we move. And again, all the different areas between capture, edit, publish, knowing like what resources to go to and like, it's it's been a crazy job and again that's just yeah. one example but compared to marquette where like again i remember i took a picture of marcus howard sitting on the floor before he went to a press conference after he dropped like 50 points and i was like should we tweet this and scott was like <laughs> well we already did the like final score graphic or something and i was like i don't know and like to your point too like i remember allison like wojo and i even sat down one summer like around a table and talked about the social media and like how it ties to recruiting and so yeah it's it's grown even since then and now it's just like i again i'm doing it in a different way but in the same way at the same time yeah it's so impressive how fast you've just flew in the last five years like going from marquette to where you are in the nba as the lead for on site is so impressive but also not surprised at all just because of who you are and how hard you work but just going through your last five years i know cam was like there's a lot to recap when you were going through it i was like question 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 but women's basketball covering them i remember you sat down with gino right and did an interview with him was that like a wow i kind of made it here moment Yes, that was like, I like remember looking back at it too. Like we, we drove to stores and like set up the whole interview with him. And I was like, I'm sitting down from like across from one of basketball's greats, like Hall of Fame coach. And I'm, I'm very big on like how I frame questions and what I'm trying to get from people because you can ask people how they're feeling or what, like a post game walk off, right? But like when I'm sitting down across from someone that's like been asked every single question in the book, I'm like, okay, what do I really want to know about them? What do fans really want to know about them? And what's something that they might be excited about telling? And I remember I asked him like, hey, like, is this what you pictured down the line in your career? And he was like, no. He was like, I was just a bad coach at a bad school. And then all of a sudden we got good players and like, but to hear it play out and like the way that he views it compared to the way that we do it, that's like the thing that stands out most. Not only like sitting across from someone amazing and being blown away, but like hearing how he views his greatness. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it's like I view all this in like a greater appreciation sort of light. It's been amazing to see you grow, like we're all saying, but it's because of how great of a storyteller you are. And I think I want to touch on that a little bit. You at the NCAA were asking questions like that to Gino or Sabrina Onescu, who I basically learned more about her because of your interview with her at such a young age. And it's so important because you were able to tell these people's story through a different lens that no one else had ever really heard about. And I think a lot of people in the media try to touch on that. And now you're doing it through pictures, which is incredible because you've taken pictures like Giannis on a Jeep in the championship. And there's, you know, a, the parade going on and confetti everywhere. But everyone knows the story behind that picture. And that's the talent that you bring to the NBA and to every single place that you've been so far. So I think I want to ask about that. Like, who has been the most like the coolest person you've been interviewing who has told the best story who have you touched on the most this is such a great question and i feel like it's so hard because i've been lucky enough to be in like the same rooms as people like i another amazing moment that i like feel like i don't stop to like reminisce so much because it's like the next thing the next thing the next thing but like the NBA 75 season had like a 75th celebration and all the top 75 players like at all star in Cleveland. And I was like in the room with LeBron James and Michael Jordan while they were shaking hands, like trying to get a, a camera in. And I'm like, oh, my God, these are like two of the best basketball players, period, like to have ever existed, no matter what your goat debate is. But I'm like, I'm in the middle of this and like. I had a similar moment with like, um, I haven't covered LeBron as much. We have someone on the, on the West Coast that covers him a ton. I kind of get our East Coast games, but I was there for LeBron's milestone night. And I know this is an interview, but like, I'll get there, I promise. Like he did his chalk toss and it was my first time covering his like infamous chalk toss and I'm filming it. And I like feel the chalk hitting me and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm like in it. I'm like, we capture these moments. I'm in the chalk. Like, 
<laughs> but we're in it. I was like, oh my gosh. Like I, I had to like, we wear all black. I'm like wiping myself down after. I was like, okay, like this is, this is one of those moments. Um, That's awesome. That's awesome. It stands out to me like when I, when it hits me that I, like I'm in it compared to just capturing it and then posting it and all of that, like, or in the locker room after the Nuggets were celebrating and DeAndre Jordan's pouring champagne on me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I'm in this. Okay. Yeah. I can appreciate it for a second. It's like that, like reminder, but interview wise, it's, it's so hard. I, I really appreciated Nikola Jovic. Jokic, sorry. I just saw Nikola Jovic for the last Miami game. I <laughs> Nikola Jokic, he just, again, once you get him talking about what he wants to talk about, I think he is an amazing interview. He wants to talk about his family. He wants to talk about his daughter. Um, so to be able to like, again, find what people want to talk about, but that sweet spot between what other people want to learn about, that's what I appreciate. But it's too hard to pick one person. There's so many. And I feel like I would leave someone out and not do them justice. Did you feel like you could like dunk or <laughs> shoot incredibly yeah, well after the say, magic dust hit you off the chalk? Like, I'd be like, I got to get out there. She's like, Cleveland. Like the <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it was. And again, I was like such a LeBron kid growing up. Like if I would finish a test early, I would like doodle pictures of LeBron on like the back of my paper. Like, <laughs> I, I was a huge LeBron fan. So then it's like, okay, little Jenny's freaking out. But in this moment, it's like, okay, you can freak Jenny's out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does awesome. a normal game day look like for you? What are you doing out there? Yeah. I mean, this is the perfect question because it's game day for me today. Um, game one in Boston for, again, their second round series against Cleveland. And it's it differs in some ways based upon what we're covering and like what storylines we're trying to pump. But basically it's, I always do my research before every game, like, but not only like, what are the storylines we need to follow? I think the second and more important portion is like, how do I bring that to life through what I'm capturing and what I'm seeing? So again, like I am really big on paying attention to player rituals or things that are in front of people all the time, but we don't necessarily talk about Giannis, for instance, does one where like right before tip, he like, kind of runs to the opposite basket and does a little pregame prayer. He's told us before that it's for his dad. And so it's like little things like that. Or today, Jason Tatum always tugs his ears and like does a little prayer and then points up. Um, he does it because his grandma, it was something about him like getting his ears pierced with his grandma. And so it's for her when he like pulls it. But it's like, we're capturing these things all the time. Basketball players are, are naturally creatures of habit. And so it's like, how can we take these rituals and be like, okay, either add more context, teach someone something new, or again, pump some sort of like storyline that we're trying to, to do. Like one that's been coming to my mind is like, okay, Jokic does his pregame sprints. Can we get like a speedometer to see how fast he's going? Or is there like a certain record he's like quickly approaching? And I can put that as like the context in text on screen or in the copy. And it's like training my brain to think that way beyond just like, okay, let me show up and like capture a game and document it for the archive and go home. It's like, I'm going in with like three to five output ideas and trying to figure out how to make them come to life. If a certain thing doesn't happen, what my backup plan is. And then again, just like how I can make it special or different when you've covered, I've covered probably thousands of basketball games at this point. I was going to say, you've probably been to like every arena in the country and seen every different type of environment, college and NBA. Um, obviously, you're out on the East Coast. One thing that we're seeing on TV a lot right now as we watch the NBA playoffs is that environment at Madison Square Garden. Um, can you touch on that a little bit? And, and have you been to a playoff game out there this year yet? I'm sure maybe. Yeah, I've actually, we have like someone local that's covered a ton of Knicks games for us. So we've been tapping into her um, to kind of cover that again. So I can do a little bit more of this Larry O'Brien trophy tour, this Boston stuff. I've covered so much Boston and Milwaukee over the past few years that we also try and keep people on what they've covered a lot of just relationally or to help with the content. But when I see these videos of MSG, I mean, she was even sending me videos last night of like outside the arena. Like it's not just inside. Outside is chaos. It, it it's like very exciting again a, a lot of people i work with are knicks fans um not too many bucks fans in the in the building for the nba i'm not the only one though but it's amazing to see just like how excited that like home crowd gets um i don't think there's anything like it and again like 
OKC, you're seeing like how crazy they're getting and they're getting their fans to like bark inside the arena. Um, <laughs> I think every single place is like really special, but MSG is like next level. Jenny, you cover a lot of, you know, the players walking in and kind of the fit check, you know, when they're when they're walking in. Does any player ever stop and talk to you or you like have a little conversation with them in moments like that before the game? Yeah, so for some reason, this is built up with Jason Tatum over the past maybe two years, maybe year and a half. Um, I'll never forget, it was an ESPN All Access game, so we were partnering with them, and they were like, hey, as part of it, we've told all the players that they have to answer one question for social at the very end of it. So I asked all the players, like, the same pre-approved question that we all agreed on, which was, like, what's your pregame meal? And Jason Tatum told me, like, salmon and rice, and I was like, okay. And I covered a Boston game like two days later. And he was like, you got another question today. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm always going to have a question. I'm like, oh, if you're offering, I mean, of course. And so then it was like, pull one out of thin air. I'm like, okay, whew, we got that done. Next time, you got anything today? And I'm like, oh my, so now it's been a thing that every single game, but this is also something I'm big on. And I, I want to make sure I say this. I don't like to force my hand or force content like a paparazzi and be like, what are you wearing today? What are you doing? Like, I am very much in the camp of like, I'm not going to speak unless I'm spoken to if that's not my job at that point in time, especially for a playoffs game. Like, I don't I don't want to attack you. I don't want you to like get out of your mode. This is serious. But so anytime he prompts me, I, I will ask him a question. And he, again, has just been amazing to work with over the past two years, like in every sense. And so. He's definitely the one to come to mind. But again, as you like game familiarity and you see these people all the time, like Dame always jokes, he's like, you live on the road. And I'm like, yes, but so do you. Like, it's not it's not that crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's another like enjoyable part. Again, you start to like familiarize yourself and like actually get to know these people. And it's not just seeing them, but you're interacting all the time. Something that Jason Tatum has always shown in his videos and I guess I said something but like his son Deuce is such an important part of his life and he's always in these videos that you share and I want to know more about like their relationship what you've seen behind the scenes has Deuce ever given you like a fist bump or something like that he's an awesome kid I'll just say like and for Jason to like bring him along like whether it be on the court whether it be like JT always runs up to him right after his intro like it's just amazing to be able to like see the type of like father he is that wants to like include his son and everything amazing that's happening in his life. Um, I got to ask Deuce a question maybe a week or two ago when they arrived to the game together. So that was really cute to see. Um, there was an Instagram post that Jason Tatum had made saying like my favorite Hooper. So I asked Deuce who his favorite Hooper was. He obviously said his dad, but no, it's just like, I, again, the family affair portion of it especially for Boston, like you would be surprised. There's a lot of guys with kids out there, whether it's like Al Horford's son or Derek White just had his second kid and like people like actually kind of get their families involved. And I think I'm a big proponent of that. Like we have such crazy jobs. I've tried to do it with my family as well. My nephew Tatum got to meet Jason Tatum and shared a cute I moment. I saw that. With him. That was so cute. That's so, and it's like, again, we have such crazy lives. So like when we can just like plug our families into it, I'm always going to be appreciative. So I know you went full time with the NBA, you said when the Bucks were in the finals, which is so cool. But I do remember, I think you covered the COVID um, bubble, right? During the playoffs the year before a little bit. Yeah, I did the G League bubble. Okay, how was that? That was, I mean, if you love watching basketball and like just like doing that all day, every day, that was like my heaven in a sense. And like not having to do my own laundry was also pretty nice, but yeah, I lived at Disney World <laughs> for a month and a half, um, which is insane to think back on. Again, G League bubble was not as intense, I don't think, as the NBA bubble, just given the time that you were there. Again, I think a month and a half is still a good chunk of time, but it didn't feel impossible. And it was in like February, March, so cold times in New York and no one was going outside. And I got to be outside and then watching basketball and covering. I mean, Rousey was in the, the G League bubble too. I was just going to so. say, was he down there for that? <laughs> yes. And I remember Scott Kuykendall sent us a, a nice little Marquette care package. So that was shout out Scott always. But yeah. no, it was it was an amazing time. Just again, experience wise, like I feel like it was the perfect place to kind of be able to like test out new things and like 
get to know people in a different way. Like you're eating in the same cafeterias as them and everything. So super unique and really grateful for that too. So you, you've traveled the world a little bit now too with the, with the NBA, not just going across the country, but I, I see you all the time and you're like in Dubai or somewhere crazy. Like what's your favorite place to travel to uh, that you've been to recently and in, in for the NBA, I should say. And, and uh, can you talk a little bit about like what you do in these uh, on these tours that you go on? Yeah. So the NBA is like very big on the fact that we are like a global game. Right. If you look at like the superstars in our league, there are so many international players. I mean, Giannis, Luka, Jokic, like there are so it has such an international like pull for it. So we have had the Paris games the past few years, which, again, I feel lucky enough to have gone to. Plus, Victor Wimbenyama and following him and getting to go to Paris, like, amazing. Obviously, we have the, the Paris Olympics this summer. I'm going to be doing training camp with USA Basketball from Vegas. And then they head to um, Abu Dhabi. And then they head over to London. And so I'll be with them for a handful of weeks at a time, which, again, I, I'm still kind of pinching myself because it could be LeBron's last Olympics. It's like, historically, it, it's a really cool opportunity. But yeah, I've been Paris, Abu Dhabi. Um, it's just like, it's very cool to be able to travel internationally for me for my job. Like Luca played in Madrid and I was like, oh my God, I want to cover that so badly. Just because like you get a different appreciation. Like these fans came from all over the world. And like uh, my, my coworker covered the Japan game and she was like, you would be so surprised. Like how many people from like all different parts of Asia just came so that they could see their favorite player play once, even if they're in the nosebleeds. And it's like, Sometimes I think we take that for granted, not knowing like that there's probably 90% of the world that will never be at an NBA game. And it's like in our backyard or down the street at Pfizer Forum. Um, if we're in Milwaukee, that is. And like, for me, it's like, I live in between MSG and Barclays. It's like, I don't know. Uh, it's maybe like gain a greater appreciation there. And then again, I just, I love being able to travel internationally. Like personally, I feel like it's made me a more well-rounded individual. There you go. Instead of just staying go. in Heartland, Heartland, Wisconsin by Arrowhead. Wisconsin. <laughs> Not Heartland, what was, though. We love Heartland. <laughs> what was it like uh, covering Wemby in uh, Paris before the draft? And like how many, was it just you that went out there from the NBA? Or do you have like a team that goes out there with you? Yeah, we had a team go. Um, it was like a professional videographer, professional audio guy, photos, myself. And we all just kind of work together on like, okay, what kind of things can we do with him there? Can we do a practice with him, a training session, take him to the Eiffel Tower? Um, obviously, he was just announced as Rookie of the Year. So they're even like bringing back a ton of our content from that, which is awesome. But I, I think from there too, like one of the outputs I had in mind is like a wish list item was like a POV of a basketball court from his perspective. That was the um, coolest one. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like to humanize him. I was like, everyone's talking about like, oh my God, look how big his bare feet are. Or like just gawking at him as if he's like not a human, which again, in some ways, like rightfully so he's not totally human and he calls himself the alien. But like at the time it was like, we need to just showcase like seriously how amazing um, his physical traits are. And I think like that video is actually up for a shorty award right now. Um, it was named a finalist. And so even just again, like trying to find unique ways and like seeing them hopefully pay off. Again, it meant a lot to me that like Victor was willing to do it and buy into it and like work with us to be able to do it. I think that's half the battle. And so getting to just, again, work with him before the stardom, he's been the same person all the way throughout. He's an amazing kid, um, but getting to see him before it like all really kicked in and then through the draft and like his first game and first summer league game even like it's it's been really, really cool to see. I feel like I'll look back in 20 years and be like, oh, my God, we did this. Now that the draft is coming up pretty soon here, is there somebody that you're going to be following that you can let us know about um, coming up in this new draft? Personally, Tyler Kolick, um, from an NBA perspective, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, well, I need to see see what happens there. No, but I'm always just on the pod, Jenny. We just had him oh, on. Oh, shout out, shout out Tyler then. We yeah, love it. I think Jenny's following Tyler, right? Or do we have some – am I blanking on that now? Yeah. It's been a little bit since we've done the pod. We took a little break. You're you're next up after after Tyler. So oh yeah, Cam. I didn't know where you're going with that, but yeah, it was Tyler <laughs> and then Jenny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I was like, Carly, Chloe, can you hear me? You still there? (laughs) I thought thought you meant is she following them on Instagram or something? I'm like, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at her followers. (laughs) I'm always following along. We love love a good Tyler Kolick follow. No, but I I think like this draft class in general, like it's going to be really interesting to see where like the top guys kind of fall and where everyone goes, even like draft lottery wise, seeing like what teams will get those top picks. So I don't know if there's like one guy that I have my eye on just yet. I think I'm just excited as a whole. And I think we've like seen this like change where it was like only college feeding into the NBA draft and the top college players. Now it's like, again, we've had G League Ignite, we've had overtime, we've had guys go overseas professionally. And now it's like, I just feel like we have a really good crop of guys in total coming from a a bunch of different backgrounds. So it's going to be cool to see. What's cool is in all these biggest moments, like when Wemby got drafted or, you know, like you mentioned LeBron and the chalk, I just think like, I always am seeing these huge moments and I'm like, there's Jenny. Like you're literally, you're right there. You're right behind these people. How many texts do you get just being like, I just saw you like during these, during these games and stuff. Oh, all the time. And like screenshots of me on TV behind someone, even though I'm trying to dodge it. I mean, Carly, you probably get it all the time too, but you're like usually in front and like meant to be there i'm just like <laughs> off to the side like with a phone in hand looking like the paparazzi no but all the time and again it's like we try and stay away but there's a million cameras and it's always fun when like my dad's like there she is or like oh so and so just sent me this or like your second cousin from whoever saw you on here and messaged you on facebook and i'm like okay great awesome so it's fun so what is your dream or goal with with this job because it just feels like you're like already so high up so do you have a dream watch out Adam Silver. <laughs> yeah seriously there you Coming go literally you. <laughs> no i i think like it sounds strange to say but when i came into the nba it was like after like a period of like grinding for like years and you know like when you're you're first starting out and you're trying to get into something and it's like i worked non-stop like i was just telling someone like i remember i i missed my older brother charlie's college graduation because there was some like Marquette athletics thing that I felt like I had to work in that time because I was so like, Oh my God, I need to keep grinding. This could lead to this. Like I need to, you know, it's like that mentality. And then I got to the NBA and I was like, I feel like I can like take a breath for a second um, and like really appreciate where I am. And again, like as someone who loves basketball and storytelling, I don't think I have a better match right now. Um, so I'm kind of riding this out, like the, the current role that I have, it's been really exciting because I've actually been able to build a team a little bit more. So this past year, I've hired two people underneath me that have been able to grow and like develop the skills that I feel like I kind of honed at the NBA to be able to do what I do. Um, hired someone actually out of San Antonio that's been able to like dip their toe in all the Wemby stuff as well. So it's like, it's also exciting for me as I like grow in the NBA to kind of bring people in and build up like this department in a sense to be able to like spread the wealth because let's be real, I can't be in two places at once. And it's everything is like just becoming bigger and bigger. And so I love the people I get to do it alongside. And I think that's become like, again, an even cooler thing. So to hopefully build this into like an even bigger team is just kind of where my mind is at right now. Okay. I'm going to have you put your bucks fan cap on now for a second. Let's do it. Uh, as as a because I, I know you are a Bucks basketball fan. As a fan, first off, thoughts on the end of the season, and then can you give your perspective on Doc Rivers and where you think we're at and what we need to improve on, maybe heading into next year. Realize I say we and in, in all of this as well. So, yeah, as a Bucks fan, and again, like as a kid that grew up like watching the Bucks when they were terrible. Um, I I feel like I can just like appreciate again that like three years ago we were champions and like being able to like celebrate all of that. I feel like sustaining like a championship level of competition, whether it be like through your roster, or, like again, what you're doing on the court, I feel like that's really, really hard. Um, I mean, even like a team like Denver, who again, like feels untouchable is down 2-0 right now. So it's, it's something that I will just say, I don't think whether it be in basketball or otherwise, it's not easy to sustain that kind of greatness, even just from one year to the next, because guys get new contracts, you have free agents, it's a lot can change. I will say, again, personally, and as a a fan of the Bucks from growing up, I was really sad last playoffs when I was like, oh my gosh, it's May and I'm not covering the Bucks. Like, it feels like I should be covering a Bucks playoff game right now. And then this year it was like, oh my gosh, it's April. And I feel like I should be covering a Bucks playoff game right now. So it's tough, again, personally, but 
I'm not extremely worried about the Bucks. I feel like when you hear about any of the guys on the team, Giannis, Dame, whoever, it's like, or you see the video of Chris like crying on the bench because of like how yeah. much he just poured onto the court and like over the years at that, it's like, I'm not extremely worried. Um, I feel like they'll figure it out just as they have in the past. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. Same with Doc. I mean, he just got his feet wet. So it's like, I know we've got our Marquette ties there too. And, yeah. and he was obviously playing there when, when my dad was on the team too. And so it's like, just kind of, I hate saying wait and see, but it feels like one of those situations where a lot of people jump the gun and want to have an opinion like immediately. And it's like, sometimes things take time and we just have to kind of watch how it plays out. I love that. Good perspective. Um, we won't keep you forever, but I just, before we go, I definitely want to touch on everything that you're doing outside of your job with mental health and advocating for mental health. And so many people know you for the MBA, but they also know you for the keep showing up, um, which has been such an important phrase for so many. Um, can you, first of all, let me just say for anyone listening that doesn't know, she created these shirts that have keep showing up on it. And how many did you, how many did you sell of that? Because it went viral. Yeah. The number is like, I actually literally lost count, but it's been over a hundred thousand dollars raised through them. So it's, it's been way bigger than I ever anticipated. How did you come up with that phrase? Yeah. And it's funny. I'm sitting in Boston because it was this Olympic runner. Her name's Desi Linden. She won the Boston marathon a few years back. And I remember she just like tweeted some days. They'll feel like you're born to do this. Other days they'll feel like you're trudging through hell, no matter what, keep showing up, seeing what you've got and give it your best shot. And when I read that, I was like, this is how I feel like this is a hundred percent something I can get behind. And again, I'm not into like following running or anything like that, but I was like, this is an amazing phrase. And I ended up just kind of using it as like my personal motto, even when I was at Marquette. And then I think I still even have a picture of like, I wrote, keep showing up on a sticky note, put it on my mirror in my bathroom at Marquette when I lived on 19th and Kilbourne. And I was like, okay, keep showing up. This is going to be like my thing. And I was out of school, living in Indiana, moving to New York for this job that I was getting at the NBA. And again, it was COVID, like things felt pretty bleak. I felt like people kind of needed to hear it. And I had like joked with a friend that like, oh, we should put these on shirts, ended up putting it on like two shirts and I posted it and someone was like, oh, that's really cool. I would love one. And so I was like, let me see if I could turn this into like something where like all the proceeds get donated. And again, from there, it was just like 200 people ordered it and then 500 people ordered it. And then one thing would close and they'd be like, can you reopen it? Can you make hoodies? Can you do hats? Can you? And I was like, okay, this is like, a self-sustaining thing. Um, and it can be really hard to, I'll say like fundraiser fatigue is a very real thing where like, you don't want to push people into doing something they don't want to do. Again, this has been maybe like three years of it. So it's like, how much do you really tweet about it? How much do you really like shove it in front of people that have seen it 20 times? But like, I've found that like, again, the, the support that it's kind of gotten and like the awareness that hopefully it's raised has been something I never anticipated like scale wise. Um, but I, again, I, I just feel appreciative of like the people that kind of got behind it and supported it because that's what made it go the direction that it went. Yeah, it was amazing. We all have the shirts. Go ahead, Chloe. I know. I was going to say, I think I have like every size because like wasn't sure. It's like small, medium, <laughs> oh large, extra large. Like I'm like, which one's going to be like, we all have each size. It's so funny. And, and we love the shirts love and Kevin Love loves the shirts and the like biggest names love the shirts. Do you still sell them right now? Like uh, for people that are going to be watching this? Yeah, I need to reopen the link because it is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month and or it might be Mental Health Awareness Month. I need to double yep. check myself. I know it's September is suicide. May is mental. So Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, but yeah, I need to reopen the link. So stay tuned because I'm sure I will be tweeting it out. But yeah, it just closes ever so often until it hits a certain number. We can bulk order it again. Keep the cost low. Keep the donations high. But people can stay tuned for the link. Well, the Maradas will keep showing up on the website to purchase. I'm sure. <laughs> my mom's probably got the link already. Oh my god! Can you sell Kim? I say, oh my we, god! We will. Um, one more question off that. You just. I'm just curious because you're in such a like a job that you're just go, 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 go. And even with like, you're always on your phone, you're always posting, trying to get it out first. Like when it comes to mental health, how do you still put that 
at the forefront of your everyday? This is like the money question because it's extremely hard. And like, I think also as I've gotten older, like it's not so much about just like, I mean, I journal every single day. I do my crossword every single morning. It's just like, it helps my brain. Like, okay, this is what day it is. This is what I'm doing. Like it kind of keeps me like present. And then again, like I'm, I'm big on journaling too, because again, everything goes so fast. So it's like, okay, the, the chalk fell on me and LeBron and this happened. Okay, cool. And it's like, if I don't write that down, like even the little moments, it's like, I don't know what I'll remember again from there on out. And so I'm big on all of that, but I'll say as I've gotten older, the physical, as it pertains to mental health, like this sounds a little silly, but hear me out. I bought an aura ring. I don't, this is not an ad, but like, do you guys have, do you know what it is? It kind of does. Our little sister kind of does. Yes. So I'm new to the game, but like, again, I travel so much. So like, I never know how much I'm actually sleeping. Like, I don't know like what my stress levels are at. I don't know like what I need. And like the fact that this tells me how much I slept, how well I slept, like on top of like the physical tracking of like, I love to run. So like figuring out, okay, like, is my body well rested enough to run? Like I got into Boston at midnight last night. I was up until two doing work. I woke up at six today. So it's like, I, I kind of know that my average amount of sleep is usually four or five hours, at least during the season. And then I'll do some catch up days in between where I like, I take a nap or I just loafed around all day. But like the physical, as it pertains to the mental has become even bigger to me, like making sure I have a meal. Like when I was younger, I used to just be like, all right, straight black coffee at the the Marquette basketball games. I'll get like four cups in and then I'll like go home and finish homework. It's like, no, what do I need in this moment? Physically, like, what can I handle? If I can't handle something, how can I recover and like get myself ready? It's kind of like the mentality of an athlete in some ways. It's like, I've never thought about recovery as it pertains to like a crazy lifestyle because I've just been so used to the next thing and the next thing. I feel like taking care of my mentals in that way, like paying attention to what my body is saying has helped me figure out what my mentals need. Yeah, that's a great message. And I just have to say like your schedule, it's so insane even hearing like last night. So we just so appreciate you coming on and doing this. It's just so nice to have you. So nice to hear that message. And hopefully people can look for that link soon too. Um, My last thing is Jason Tatum's coming up to you tonight and saying, what do you got? What are you going to say? It's crazy because I started thinking about this. I went to a coffee shop this morning and I need to think of something. So if you guys have any ideas, it's like, it needs to be short. Like he needs to be able to answer it in two seconds. Nothing silly because it's game one or serious. Like I need some help. I feel like I've, I have a list in my phone of things I've asked him. I'm like, what do you guys (laughs) got? I I mean, the dude always has a sharp haircut. I mean, that, that has to be a type of, I mean, does he do that before every game? Get a, get a haircut. That would be a question. I would wonder. That's a great question. It's a great question. yeah. He's always, he's always got the beard lined up in, in, in the, in the cut going. So he's That's, crisp. just leave that as an, as an option. You could have that as you could <laughs> snowball from there. It goes viral. He like, doesn't answer it. <laughs> it's like, that's a I'm dumbest like, that question was, ever. Was actually for Cam. That wasn't from me. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Well, keep us posted on what you ask him. I can't even think right now. I'm like, I've, I'm thinking of the most generic questions ever. So it is hard to think of something a little bit unique, but um, Chloe will text ask him you. If he re- ask him if he remembers playing against Cam for Playground Elite when they played the St. Louis Eagles in the UIBL. Stop it. The shortest so white kid of all time. <laughs> yeah. That's like a whole, that's like a whole conversation. I feel like we could have too. Like I played against Enrique <laughs> in high school, like summer league stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And like, there's so many good hoopers that came out of Milwaukee. Like yeah. the Warriors obviously have had a ton of guys come through there too. So we just did Enrique's right? camp uh, at the facility actually. Oh, that's she awesome. Just back the other weekend. Yeah. Yeah, she was very. Cool. I'm telling you, all roads lead to Milwaukee. There's, yeah, that's just what it is. Okay, Jenny, thank you so, so much for coming on. Good luck with everything tonight and the rest of the way. And I'm excited to catch up with you soon. Thank you. I just want to say, love your family. Love that you guys are doing this. And thank you so much for having me. Thank You're you. So sweet. Thank you. 